Hello builders! Welcome to another Let's Build video from me, your buddy Stone. Today we're building a habitat for the sheep and the alpacas, our little woolly friends. First on the agenda is a barn for them to sleep in and for the guests to enter and have a little walk through the exhibit. If you watched my previous video I just released where I built the village for this central petting zoo area, then you'll know that what I'm about to say isn't a big surprise. But I originally built this zone with a western theme in mind, but quickly shifted afterwards to a European one as most of the animals in the pack are European animals. But feel free to enjoy me building this barn in the western style for the first 4 minutes, and then you can quickly see me tear apart the walls and redo the exterior just to fit the new idea for the European area. I'm really happy with the way the barn turned out regardless in both styles, and you know what? Just for you, both styles will be on the workshop so you can download them and add to your zoos as well. I will leave the link down below for you to click on. And speaking of links, if you want to check me out on Twitch, feel free to click that link too. Maybe you come over and say hello, maybe I say hi back, maybe we become best friends, maybe we become lifelong enemies, who knows what's going to happen until you hit that link and give me a follow and say hi. But I do hope to see you around someday, and then you can come and give me some criticism or judgement on my builds in Plan Zoo or other games, cause I do love playing a bunch of these kinds of games on my channel. But enough of that, let's get on to talking about the building. So yes, right now we are just building some nice structural supports, cause you know, you don't want to make it look like it can float, even though in Plan Zoo it can float. But you don't want to make it look like that, cause we're going for a touch of realism in this zoo. Although only a touch, I do like the fantastical whenever I can fit it in, just to make things look even more prettier than you would find in real life. After all, this is supposed to be my ideal zoo that I want to visit, and hopefully one you want to visit as well. But back to these structural supports, I feel like they were getting a little too busy, so we're just going to come in and we're going to remove a couple of them, and just spread out the ones we're left with. I just thought that the roof was getting a little too crazy and I didn't want it to be too overpowering for the eyes when guests walk in there. And it wouldn't be a barn now would it without the sleeping stalls and the hay for the animals to rest in. One important building tip I can give you right now is always work on your trimming. Never settle just for a flat wall. Add a little bit of wood or stone and just accentuate the windows or the edges and just put random little shapes in the wall. That way it breaks up that boring flat surface into something a little bit more exciting to look at for the eye. I ended up loving this barn idea so much that I used it not once, but twice for the petting zoo area. Here in the woolly barn that we'll be building today, and again in the highland cow and goat exhibit which will be coming up on the channel later. And what I said before about trimming applies to the roof as well. Just add in a little bit of trim really accentuates that roof and makes it all the more beautiful. Now it comes time to do the redesign that I spoke about earlier. I was still happy with the western theme I had built for this barn and the other buildings of the zone, but overall I just want something a little bit different, a little bit more European looking, and this just wasn't cutting it for my initial concept for this area of the zoo. But I'm not one to double down on a mistake, and I'm always willing to put the work in to make it right in the end. And I hope you'll agree that the work I put in really helps bring this whole area to life. Luckily, the interior was already perfect, so I only had to change the outer shell of the building, and that just included doing the roof and the walls. Overall, a really quick change that really only took me about half an hour to do. Thankfully, with the power of video editing, you can see all this done in a matter of moments. Just like that, it's magic. Oh yes, that's why sometimes there is a big delay on videos on Plan Zoo for this channel, because it does take me quite a few days to build these sections of the zoo. 
even right now I am just starting our Australian section. But I'm looking forward to getting that one up on the channel too, because I love Australia and New Zealand animals in this game. There are so many cute ones, whether it's the kiwis or the koalas or especially the quokkas. I love all of them, they are adorable. And a piece of advice when you're building walls, or rebuilding walls in this case, always use your friend copy paste. Get one wall built just the way you want it, and then copy paste it over and over, and it will save you so much time. And you'll often see me doing exactly that in my builds, where I am just copy pasting sections of walls or roofs, and just bring them over, and again, it just saves you so much time, and allows you to get things done way faster than you would normally. Once I'm done with most of the copy pasting in, it's just a little bit of fine work done here and there, adding a few beams just cover up a few imperfections, and overall not that much work. Again, this will be on the workshop along with the other barn version, and you can download whatever one you want for your own zoos. And speaking of workshop items, feel free to join the Discord, link down below, and let me know any ideas that you want me to build. I will be doing a weekly segment soon over on Twitch where I will build your ideas and put them up on the workshop. If you ever get the chance, I recommend trying out the decals in your own builds. It just adds a little bit of wear and tear to the edges of your building just making it look well real and lived in and just gives it a little bit of pop that brings a build together. And now that the barn is complete, let's work on the habitat for the alpacas and sheeps. And as always, the first thing I do after constructing the initial buildings is to do a little bit of terrain editing and planning out how I want the habitat to look. One thing that came to mind while I was playing this out was to create a river that was going to flow through the entire section and touch every single habitat of the barnyard pack. But we'll get on that a little bit later. First things first, we're going to build a little staff door in the back here, and we're going to decorate it like a little hobbit door. Because why not? One thing I need to improve my skill on is to create a perfect circle out of pieces like this. There are certain tricks that you can find, such as using this grid piece and rotating it over and over again and making copies of it. It didn't quite work out for me, as you can see it did require a bit of micro adjusting. And I think in the end we just end up ditching this little round circle, but I left it in so you can see a demonstration of the concept and then maybe you can improve it on your own as well. While I was building this and trying to decide on what I wanted to do with this keeper gate, chat suggested a hobbit door, and you know what, I fell in love with the idea. Never really built a hobbit door before, and I feel like I probably could have done better with it, but in the end it is just a keeper gate in the back of the exhibit, and not to the main focus point. But maybe one day I will make a proper little hobbit village and put that up on the workshop. And looking at the door, I thought it looked a little bit bland, so I ended up removing the original wood design that we came up with and replacing it with a round brick circle, trying a different method to make a round one, and I think it turned out a little bit better.
And it wouldn't be a hobbit hole without a garden out front for your gardeners to be dropping their eaves in. I haven't dropped no eaves, sir, honest. Hobbits always be dropping eaves. They think just carrying one ring bearer allows them to get away with it, but no, I remember. I remember, and I'm going to duck their pay for every eaves dropped. It's the only way they're going to learn. I apologize, I get a little worked up about my eaves. Anyways, where were we? Oh yes, back to the building. So, we're going to come in and we're going to add a little bit of pathing and some fencing to the exterior of the exhibit so guests know where they can walk and also keep the animals inside. I suppose that's important too when you're building these little habitats. The fencing is going to be nice and simple. We're just going to use the new fencing that came with the DLC and have that cover the exterior of the habitat. And with the fencing done, let's add in a barrier so the game knows that this is actually a habitat. Fun fact for you, if your zoo gets as large as mine, just the simple act of adding a barrier really lags out your computer. It takes me quite a while to get these barriers down as my computer has to struggle with every placement of posts. But that's to be expected when you have over a hundred species in your zoo. And it probably doesn't help that I put so much detail into each and every one of my habitats. And that just probably just serves to leg up my computer even more. Speaking of leg, let's add some water effects to create this waterfall because that can only help improve my frame rate, I'm sure. With that waterfall looking absolutely glorious, let's start smoothing out the beach side so the animals can come in and drink from the water. That is the idea for the river after all, but we will have some other water feeders throughout the habitat. And now it's time for a little bit of detailing around the edges of the habitat, adding in a little bit of rock work here and there just so everything doesn't look so plain and boring. Everyone who has watched my videos knows I love the rock work. More rock equals more good in Planet Zoo as far as I'm concerned, and most building games. Any building game that lets me just have rocks everywhere, love them. Top tier games in my opinion. Now the idea for this section of the zoo is to make it look like a little farming village, and of course it can't be a farming village without some farmlands. But this is me, I don't like having flat habitats, so I don't want it to be a flat boring farm. We are going to come in and make it look glorious with some nice tier levels into the farmland. To start that look, we're just going to use these logs and some hull pieces from the Arctic pack. Just to make it look like these are holding back the hillside and allowing the farmers to plant their crops. To create our farm plots, we're just going to use a little bit of mulch and some wooden beams to outline it. From there, we're just going to merge into the back end of the exhibit and then we'll throw some feeders in and uh, just to attract the animals over so they will eat from the crops. Speaking of crops, of course we're going to fill these with different kinds of plants and vegetables to make it look like that farmers are growing all sorts of things. And here is a fun plant zoo fact for you, as well as some advice in case you want to make a more natural looking exhibit wall. There are some plants, such as the maize or the tomato plants, which actually act as barriers for animals. So if you put those around the edges, your animals will not be able to escape. This little side structure that we're building right now is just an area for the keepers to store some hay and for the animals to get a little bit of shade while they're eating. Animals get hot just like people do. And just like you want to give guests some shade while on these hot days, you want to make sure to take care of your animals. After all, they are covered in big old woolly coats. I imagine they get quite hot underneath that. Now it's time to add in some drinking stations, the feeders, and a few toys for our animals. I usually like to add these to my habitats before I get into all the detailed work. That way I know what I have to leave room for while I'm putting trees and plants down.
Okay, let's get the last of this rock work complete, get all those details in, and then after that we can start working on all that vegetation. All those nice little trees, grasses, and plants, everything that's just going to bring this habitat to life. Of course, an often underlooked side of doing habitat builds is doing your backdrops. And I like to add in a little bit of vegetation and rocks in the background to make it look like the habitat and zoo is larger than it actually is from a guest perspective. From guests walking in the habitat, it looks like there is a vast little forest right behind the habitat, even though guests know it's all a ruse, but you want to create that illusion. That's just good park creation 101 for you. Another building tip for you is when you're painting your terrain, make sure to add in a little bit of dirt trails here and there to imply that the animals and the keepers are walking those paths and the grass is not being able to grow. Tell a story with your habitat and your builds. That is a key piece of advice I always tell people over on the stream. You'll notice that while placing the trees in this habitat, I kept them all near the back end of it. This is because I wanted them to blend in with the woodland up on the hills, and we also do not want too many trees blocking up our farm fields. Although taking a quick break from the plants, at this point I realized I needed to decorate the inside of the barn with some clutter. It wouldn't be a barn without some barnyard clutter now, would it? With that DD2 we're taken care of, let's get back on planting some vegetation and filling up these farm fields. And these watermelons are actually watermelon feeders, but I do mix in a couple of little prop watermelons just to make it look like there are really more than there is for the animals. And to further increase the illusion that these things are growing, we add in a couple of little grape vines to make it look like, well, the watermelons are still growing on the vine. And I love adding me some moss to my habitats as well. It just adds a little bit more green and helps touch up some of these boring rocks just to make everything look like life is clinging to everything. Aside from being a farm, this is also a grazing field for our little animals. So let's add in a bunch of grass and some other plants too, just so there's stuff for them to nibble on. They are some growing boys after all. I'm always in love with the habitat once I start adding in the plants. 
All that hard work that goes into it has all paid off and the whole thing is coming together in its own. Especially when you take all that grass and you layer in a couple flowers into it to make it look like a proper meadow. Oh yes, and pay no attention to the donkeys. There are no donkeys. I repeat, no donkeys in this habitat. They were there initially, but we ended up removing them and giving them own habitat later. So I will have that upload to the channel in a few days, maybe in a week or two, depending on how fast I can get my editing done. Overall, this entire zone came out looking beautiful, and I'm sure you will agree when you see all of my videos coming out soon. But if you want to see a tour of the whole area, check out the link down below, as that is already up on the channel, and you can have a nice cinematic road tour of this whole zone. And that essentially ends most of the interior of the exhibit. All that's left now is to do a little bit of fine tuning and decorating around the exterior and just clean up the mountains and hillsides. Overall, not too much work left to do. Now that we're nearing the end of the video, I want to thank you all for watching this far. If you made it this far, you know who you are, you are the best, and I appreciate you. Feel free to hit that like button and subscribe and join me on Twitch as well if you want to see me building this or other little weird games I like to play as well. I will be endeavoring to try and add more of my creations on the workshop, so feel free to check me out over there as well and add these to your zoo. But with that quick spiel over with, let's end the video with one final flyby of this habitat. I hope you all have a great day. May your builds be awesome and fill you with joy. Have a good one. Happy building. Bye.